Welcome to another episode of Managerial Accounting. I'm your host, Michael McLaughlin, PhD, CPA, and the only person to have successfully trained a ferret to ride a bicycle. Now, before we discuss activity-based costing, the balance scorecard, and other ideas that will change your freaking life, we need to cover some basic cost concepts. Let's start by asking the most fundamental question. What is a cost? You're probably thinking, look, I know what a cost is. It's when a company pays money to acquire inventory, or it's when a company pays wages to its employees, or it's when the marketing team spends $900 on kale for the company picnic. Who's going to eat all this kale? It's got lots of vitamins. Why won't anyone eat this garbage? It's technically edible. Now, those are all clearly costs, but I'd like you to think of costs more broadly. A cost is any resource sacrificed or foregone to achieve a particular objective. Thus, costs aren't just about making money. Right now, you're watching this video, but you could be knitting a sweater, reading a book, or becoming a level 70 wizard on World of Warcraft. You're giving up leisure time or time that could have been spent working in order to learn something. So you are incurring a cost. By choosing one alternative, you're giving up another alternative, and that's called an opportunity cost. Thus, not all costs involve the payment of money. Sometimes you're paying out money, but other times you're giving up another resource like time. Now, I know what you're thinking. Who knew accounting could be this exciting? I know how you feel. I felt the same way when I learned that groundhogs could predict the weather. Now that you know what a cost is, let's define the term cost object. A cost object is anything for which you can assign a cost. A cost object could be a department, a division, a product, even a customer. You can measure the cost of pretty much anything, which led one student to ask me, what is an example of something that is not a cost object? That one had me stumped until it hit me. Love. You cannot put a price on love, unless you're in Las Vegas, in which case anything goes. Now that you know what cost objects are, prepare to have your mind blown. Costs can be either direct or indirect. Wow. What is a direct cost? I'm glad you asked. A direct cost is a cost that is directly traceable to the cost object. Conversely, an indirect cost is a cost that is not directly traceable to the cost object. So, direct cost, traceable. Indirect cost, not traceable. Here's an example. If we're manufacturing tandem bicycles, the cost of the tires used on the bicycle would be a direct cost of making the bicycle. Whatever the tires cost, let's say $100, was a direct cost of making that bicycle. We could say this $100 went into the tires that are put on that bicycle. But what about the rent you pay for a factory to manufacture the bicycles? If you pay $50,000 of rent for the factory, we can't directly trace that $50,000 to any specific bicycle. Thus, factory rent would be an indirect cost of the product, which in this case is a pathetic product, only purchased by someone who is desperate for attention or too lazy to pedal their own bicycle and wants to free ride off someone else's effort. So all companies have direct and indirect costs. But with manufacturers, we can make another distinction. We have product and period costs. For a manufacturer, all costs incurred to manufacture the product are called product costs. This is important because product costs are not expensed immediately. They attach to the product and are only expensed when the product is sold. Because product costs become attached to the product, they are also known as inventoriable costs. This concept is actually quite profound because it means that a manufacturer would actually capitalize the labor costs of factory workers. If a factory worker is owed $700 after a week of work, the company would not record wages expense. Instead, it would increase the inventory account. The labor cost would be expensed later when the product is sold. I told you that was profound. If you feel like your head is about to explode, it probably is. Although, it could also be those drugs you took this morning. Now, there are three types of product costs, direct materials, direct labor, and manufacturing overhead. Manufacturing overhead is the most confusing of those three costs for students to understand. It includes all manufacturing costs other than direct materials and direct labor. Factory rent, insurance for the factory, the salary of a production manager or a janitor that works in the factory, those are all examples of manufacturing overhead. These costs are necessary to manufacture the product, but they cannot be directly traced to the product. Thus, you could think of manufacturing overhead as indirect manufacturing costs. 
So now that you know what a product cost is, you're probably wondering, what is a period cost? And I'm not going to tell you, unless you purchase my managerial accounting course for the low price of $500. I'm just kidding. I don't have a paid course. The only paid course I have teaches you how to become a millionaire overnight by gambling on iguana races. A period cost is simply any cost that is not a product cost. When you manufacture bicycles, you incur marketing costs, advertising costs, and administrative costs like the salaries of accountants or the CEO. These are all examples of period costs. Period costs are expensed when they're incurred. Unlike product costs, they do not attach to the product and become part of inventory. Before we end today's lesson, I need to talk about a type of cost so vile, so repugnant, so insidious that I hesitate to mention its very name, the sunk cost. A sunk cost is a cost that has already been incurred and cannot be recovered. Let's say your friend Pete obtained a master's degree in puppet arts from the University of Connecticut. And yes, that is a real degree. A link will appear in the description section below. But before you master the arts of puppetry, remember that such a degree will make you functionally unemployable, may cause your family to disown you, and will mean the end of your social life. But let's say that your friend Pete ignored these warnings and spent $40,000 to get the degree. Shortly after graduating, Pete bumps into Elon Musk at an airport and is offered a job at Tesla. But then Pete tells you, I can't take the job designing cars at Tesla. Otherwise, the $40,000 I spent on a puppetry degree would have been a waste of money. This is an example of a sunk cost. Pete already spent the money on tuition and he can't get it back. He needs to focus on making the best decision going forward and ignore what happened with the tuition. Many bad business decisions have been made because executives failed to ignore sunk costs. Sunk costs should be irrelevant to decision making. This has been a lot of information for you to take in. So let me summarize today's lesson. If you ride a tandem bicycle, please stop. You're a serious road hazard to squirrels and small children. That's all for today. Please remember to get your pet tarantula spayed or neutered.